Are you a new owner of a Pixel 9 Pro Fold and you're finding yourself a little bit lost? Maybe you're not a former Pixel user and you don't really know what's going on in this video. I'm going to try to help with that by giving you a whole bunch of tips and tricks. I'm going to try to label everything down below so you can kind of skip around. This video is going to be dense and I'm going to try to move as quickly as I can without being confusing. We're going to start with some basic, simple stuff regarding multitasking. So with a big device like the Pixel 9 Pro Fold, that big internal screen absolutely begs to be used for multitasking, for having more than one app open at a time. And there are quite a few ways to actually get into that type of experience. So we'll start off with the simplest one. We're going to open up the Google Play Store, but any application is going to work just fine. At the bottom of your screen, you see that little white bar. If you do a short swipe up on that, you're going to see your taskbar. Now, your taskbar is exactly the same as your apps down here at the bottom. That's the same. That is your taskbar. Okay, so when an application is opened and you do your little quick swipe up, you're going to see those applications. From there, if you pick another app, we'll just do... Uh, how about YouTube? We'll grab YouTube. If you long press on that, you can then drag it to the left or right side. And when you let go, you're going to have that application in a split screen perspective. Now, you'll notice that on my taskbar, I have a few folders. This allows me to quickly access apps that I'm going to want to split screen with more. And it's really simple to make a folder. All you're going to do is put an application on your desktop. We'll just grab a random one. And then all you got to do is drag another app on top of that one to make a folder and then drag that folder onto your taskbar. And it's going to be there. That will make your multitasking a little bit easier because otherwise, if you don't have you know, the application on this taskbar that you want to use, you can click on the little app drawer on the left and the same thing is going to work from here. You can grab any application you want and drag it off from there. But there are more ways to get into multitasking. Let's say you have the app open that you want to split screen with. If you swipe up and hold, you'll see your list of recently opened applications. I've only ran these two, so that's what's there. And you can see this little option right here that says split. If I click on that, it's going to throw that app over, and then I have to select from my other recently opened applications. And there you go. I am in the split screen view. Of course, you can also use your taskbar down here to grab another application. And from this, uh, from this sort of view, you can just tap on the app, and it's going to throw it into that split screen. The last way to do this is to simply long press on the app icon and you will see again right there split screen and it will throw you into this perspective where the app is over there waiting on the side and you can then select another app and you're now split screening. Once you are in this perspective, you have a little bar in the middle that you can actually drag to resize the two apps. You can also double click it or double touch it, tap it twice <laughs> to make them switch places. And if this is a set of apps, two apps that you like to launch together frequently, if you do the swipe up and hold again, you can click on save app pair and it's gonna give you a quick shortcut to directly launch those two apps together. There's actually one more way to get into split screening that I almost forgot about. So we're in the Google Play Store now and let's say you get a notification like I have here. If you long press on that text, you can then drag it and drop it down in place, and there you go. Now, one cool thing about the way that Pixels handle multitasking when you have two windows open is the way that they handle their back gesture. Some phones don't do this the same way, but I really like how Google does this. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So look, we're gonna go a layer deep in the Play Store and let's turn down my volume so that I'm not actually playing anything and we'll go a layer deep in YouTube. If I wanna go back on YouTube here on the right, all I have to do is swipe back on the side on the right. If I wanna go back on the Play Store, I swipe back over on this side will go back on the Play Store. So the gesture is dependent upon what side you're on. On some phones, you have to tap the app to bring it into focus, and then a swipe on either side will act on whatever app you just used. On Pixel devices, it is always dependent upon what side you're swiping back on, so just keep that in mind. Perhaps you like to multitask without split screening though. One quick way to switch between the apps that you have open is to simply swipe on that bottom bar down there. And if you swipe this way, it's just going to quickly take you through the applications that you have had open recently. So again, just swipe along the bottom and you can quickly jump between your opened applications. Now, if you actually touch that bar down there and hold it, 
what will happen is something called circle to search. And I find this function to be really, really useful. You can do a lot of cool stuff with this, like automatically translating text, but you can also simply circle something and it will search for that if it is an image, but you can also tap on words and it will search those words, but you can also hit copy. So you can then paste those words somewhere else. It just basically allows you to very rapidly do a search of your entire screen. So talking about that taskbar again, let's say you don't like that gesture that you have to do to bring the taskbar into place and you wish you could just be there full time. There is a way to do this. If you jump into your settings, click on display, scroll down to navigation mode. And what you're going to do is change to three button navigation. Now, unfortunately to do this, you do lose your normal gestures. You will be using these buttons down here at the bottom, which are back home, and then that is your recents button. But by doing this, you will have your taskbar accessible to you all the time. Doubling back to that recents screen, if you do your swipe up and hold, you do have several options down here at the bottom. I already did mention the split screen button, but a lot of people don't realize this is also probably the easiest way to screenshot a specific application. Instead of doing the power button and volume down key press, you can just tap on screenshot and you're gonna get your screenshot pop up. From there, you can click on the pin and quickly crop this thing or draw on it, whatever you need to do, share it, save it, whatever you need to do from there, easily accessible. And we also have, from the same perspective, the select button. And this also gives you a quick way to select text. Maybe you don't want to use circle to search for some reason. Well, you do have another way to simply grab text from an open app. Let's talk about customizing your home screen. There's a few options here. And if you long press on an open space in your home screen, you will see this little pop up. We're going to jump into wallpaper and styles first. And I'm going to show you a couple of cool things. If you scroll down here, you have app grid. And what this allows you to do is to change the grid of your home screen. So basically how many applications, how many icons can fit this way and this way. You can see I've set mine to five by five, but you do have other options there. If we go back, we have access to one of my favorite features. Let's go into more wallpapers and then select AI wallpaper. So you can see several different sort of styles that you can choose from. And below this are wallpapers that I have already made. Let's just pick translucent and we're going to click on inspire me and i think it's going to just sort of randomize here basically what you're doing is you're changing the words that are underlined to fit what you want to have and it's going to use generative ai to try and create a wallpaper based on what you just told it and i think that a lot of the time they look pretty darn good let me go over here to x-ray and i'll show you kind of what i mean so if i go to uh, B wings here. You can change what word you want. You have all these different options. Let's pick a daffodil. And so x ray daffodil in turquoise. And let's create that wallpaper. And there you go. You have several options that fit that description. And if you want to set that as your wallpaper, just click on the check mark in the top right hand corner. And you can see how this is going to look on your device. Another quick thing in the customization category, if we click on battery, we can scroll down and toggle on battery percentage. What that's doing is it's showing the battery percentage in the top right hand corner of the screen. So instead of having just an icon, it doesn't tell you a whole lot. Now you can see exactly where your battery is at. Let's jump over to display and we'll talk about the always on display. From there, we're going to click on lock screen and scroll down to always show time and info. And what that's going to do for you is give you this view here where even when your phone is off, you're going to have the time showing up on there as an always on display. If we go back one layer just to display, you can see something called continue using apps on fold. This is a really useful one. So when you're using this phone in the tablet form and you close it, the device has to know what you want it to do, and you can tell it here. So you can have it set to always, which means that anytime you close this device, what's gonna happen is this. So we're gonna set this to always, and when I close it, it's just going to continue exactly what I was doing on this cover display. I open it back up and it's going to switch back to the inner display. I close it, it's gonna switch back to the outer display. It's always just going to be there. But you can change this. By default, it's actually set to swipe up to continue. What this does is it gives you a chance to decide in the moment what you want to see happen. So when I close it, it's gonna ask me to swipe up to continue and it actually did face unlock. I think it literally saw me on the screen and it unlocked it 
it and it continue. But you have an opportunity to swipe up to continue or to ignore it and it's going to lock. And then of course you can also simply set this to never and then every time you close it, it's going to just lock the device. You can choose what you want to see happen though. One more cool thing in this display section, if you scroll down to auto rotate screen, I love that they give you multiple options here. So auto rotate when folded, and auto rotate when unfolded. So for me, I actually like having auto rotation on when I'm on the tablet screen, but I don't want it to be on when I am using my cover display. It's maybe weird, but I love that they give you the option to give that sort of granular control or to have that kind of granular control. Jump back one layer back into display again. There's so much stuff in here. Let's go into lock screen and we're going to scroll down and see now playing. Let's click on that and make sure that is turned on because what that's going to do, it's a really cool pixel feature. If your phone hears music around you, it's going to identify that and you can actually have that show up on the lock screen and you can actually have it show the history, all the different songs that it has heard while it has been on you. Let me show you some cool stuff about the Google Keyboard Gboard because there's a lot of really good stuff here. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on our settings button. I held it for too long. Let's click that settings button. Let's go to voice typing and make sure that faster voice typing and assistant voice typing are both turned on. I do have add punctuation turned off because it's gonna try to guess when they should put a comma or a period and it just never really works that great for me. So I just have that turned off and I will manually say period or comma and it will do it at that point. But what this allows you to do is this. If I click on that little microphone icon, I can just naturally talk and say what I wanna say, period. If I continue talking for a long time, it's just going to continue typing out everything for me very, very quickly and very, very accurately. Now, one of my favorite things about this is that I can actually stop and type some things manually and then just keep talking and it will continue typing for me. I really, really like this. Now that I've got a whole bunch of nonsense typed out, let's click on this little A with a check mark. And what this is gonna do is actually proofread what I've just written. It will try to spell check things and it will try to add punctuation. And you can simply click one of those and there you go. If you don't see that on there, what you can do is again, click on this little uh, blue icon on the far left with the little blocks in it. And you can just drag what you want up here to the top. I like the grammar checker and obviously assistant keyboard is one of my favorites. I would also advise that you jump into your settings and go into text correction and make sure block offensive words is turned off. That way you don't actually tell someone to go duck themselves. Let's jump into the phone application. Click the little three dots here and go into settings. There's quite a few things that you're gonna wanna turn on. So first off, call ID and spam, see caller ID and spam ID. Make sure that is turned on. But you also have a lot of like intelligent things like hold for me. See when your assistant can hold for you. If you wanna turn that on, you actually have to manually turn that on. Direct my call. This is another thing you have to turn on. Have assistant transcribe phone menu options live and read through the menu. So if you're calling one of these hotlines and it says press one to do this, press two, it's gonna give you those options and you can press a button on your screen. It'll do this stuff for you. Call screening, again, turn this on. So when you're getting a phone call from someone you don't know, someone you don't wanna to talk to, maybe you think this might be spam, you can have the AI assistant answer the phone call for you. And I actually like to turn on maximum protection here. So it will screen unknown numbers and decline spam calls altogether. Sometimes that might be too aggressive, so you can put that on medium, but personally, I'm gonna go with maximum. And lastly is call notes. You have to manually turn this on as well. And when you're talking to someone, you can press a button on your screen and it will, it will actually let them know that this is happening. But it's gonna start keeping a transcript of that phone call for you that you can then reference after the phone call is over. Back in our settings, since you are using a Pixel phone, if you go to network and internet and then scroll down to VPN, you will see that VPN by Google is an option just a couple of key presses away and now this VPN can be turned on and we are now connected. While VPNs aren't quite as great as some people think they are, it will kind of help anonymize you a little bit and it's pretty easy to turn that thing on. Back in settings, let's scroll down to security and privacy and then let's scroll down to device unlock. From there, let's jump into fingerprints and face unlock and there are some cool things here. 
So the first thing I want to tell you is make sure that you set up your face unlock because this is actually a secure face unlock, which means it's usable in your banking application. So you fire up your bank app, camera sees you, and it unlocks pretty much instantly and securely. That is pretty cool. I will have turned on skip lock screen. So basically what happens is as soon as you unlock your phone, it sees you. It's just going to immediately unlock. That does make things a bit more convenient. Sometimes I wear sunglasses, so I do turn require eyes to be open off because that just makes things a bit easier. If we go back one step, let's go into fingerprint unlock and you can add additional fingerprints here. And one thing you definitely should turn on is touch to unlock any time. What this means is whenever your device is turned off or it's locked, you just have to simply touch that fingerprint scanner and it's going to unlock. If that setting is turned off, you have to actually click the power button to to wake it up and then touch the fingerprint scanner to unlock and it just adds an additional layer for me let's jump into google photos because there are a couple of interesting features there that you need to know about click on edit and if we scroll over to tools you will see where we're going to be going first and it's something called zoom enhance and what this is going to let you do is zoom in after the fact and it will try to enhance that photo so let's try to zoom in on this ball back here in the background click on crop and enhance and it's going to try to process this and make this image look a little bit clearer so you can see here if i long press it will switch back and forth between the two this is not some like incredible feature that's just mind-blowing but it definitely does help a little bit let's jump back now and let's click on the magic editor button in the bottom left hand corner and this is something called reimagine that you're now able to do within magic editor so let's just circle an area over here next to my dog and of course it kind of grabbed in a weird way but you can click on reimagine and you can just type something here so I'm going to type in flowers and what it's going to do is it's going to try to put flowers where I just circled. And there you go. You can see right there a little patch of flowers that I think actually looks pretty good. And you can scroll through and see different versions of this. And of course, you can see where it added stuff in there. So that's reimagine. Type in whatever you want and it's going to try to add that stuff there. The last thing I want to show you is how to get your free year of Gemini Advanced. So what we're going to do is go into the Gemini application, click on your profile picture in the top right, and then you should see a little link right around here that says something like upgrade to Gemini Advanced. I've already done it, so it's not showing there for me. Click on that. It'll take you through the process and you will get your free year of Gemini Advanced. What that's going to get you is better processing inside Google Gemini, but also access to things like Gemini Live, which you can see right down here in this bottom right hand corner. If I click on this, it's going to fire up Gemini Live where you can have a conversation in a very natural way with the Gemini assistant. Future editor Shane here to clarify, it will also get you two terabytes of cloud storage. So even if you don't want the like advanced AI stuff, you're going to get a year of two terabytes of cloud storage. So maybe you want that. So guys, I know that was a lot, but hopefully it's helpful to new users of this brand new Google Pixel phone. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.